name of Lennon built this place. He also helped build the church down here in Clifton. It was built in 1866, so this here is from about that time. Betts, Besaw, Ezra Blair, Hazy Blair, they all owned this place at some time. My father bought it in 1918. George Rowell. Waldron, John Waldron, was one of the first into this country. My mother was a Waldron. Josiah Sawyer, he was here about 1792, 94. Then there was a Lindsay in 1800, and John Waldron come along about seven years later. I was born and raised here, a mile outside of Sawyerville. My grandfather built the place. I was provincial champion shearing sheep in 61 and 63. My record was a minute and 59 seconds. Once sheared 101 sheep in a day. It took me 10 and three quarter hours. I must have been, gotta think back, 35, 36 years old, Sam Lee. I was overseas 22 months, two years in the service in Canada almost four years away from home. They put us on a train to Halifax for embarkation. Arrived on a Sunday and they put us right in the boat. We didn't sail till Friday, Friday the 13th. Didn't sail on a convoy, we were alone. The Empress of Scotland, 7,000 men. Saw a U-boat once and we fired at her, then outrun her. That ship could do 30, 35 knots. I guess they put the coal to her. Then one day someone sighted land, a green coast. It was the tip of Ireland. Don't let anyone tell you Ireland isn't green. We didn't arrive until about the 1st of June, before D-Day. Two weeks on that ship, we zigzagged all over the Atlantic. Arrived in Gorick, Scotland on the Clyde River. I tell you, there were some ships there. During the war, we knit socks, my mother and I, for the Red Cross. I could knit the legs and she would finish the feet, as I couldn't do those stitches as yet. I could knit a sock a day. We'd pass most days in the winter that way. No lights, so we didn't knit at night. All the men overseas had needles, a thimble, and wool to darn their own socks. George said a man had to show his socks with holes beyond repair to get a new pair, Myrtle Rowell. When I was a kid, we used to butcher a pig and a couple of chickens at Christmas. My mother would buy a sack of flour at the store and we'd all make bread and cakes or cookies. The flour came in a cloth sack. She'd wash and bleach the cloth and make some clothes, maybe a dress for me. I'm telling you, if we saw a nickel in the road, we didn't leave it laying there. If a girl couldn't knit, near everyone had a grandmother who could. 100% wool, two ply, will keep your feet warm. 12 inch leg, double ribbed to keep them up, occasionally a bar or two near the top to identify a matching pair. Two new pairs each winter for every man in the house kept a mother busy in the fall. I used to cut pulp wood back when I was a young fellow. We had to peel the wood then. In the summer, the bark would slip off easy. 
If you waited till fall, the sap got sticky and it was hard going. We used a cross-cut saw that had a narrow blade. If your blade was too wide, it would bind. We'd make maybe a dollar, dollar and a half a day. Don't seem like much now, but everyone else was making the same. I used to cut some for Ronnie Bell, but the last few years is just on my place. Cut a strip, thin a place, move on. It grows, reseeds itself. You always got wood to cut, you always got work. Bob Blair. Been using the chainsaw since I was 14 years old. Can hardly lift my arms above my shoulders. In the evening, knees, legs, sometimes in knots after climbing through snow in the woods. But if I walk up the road a ways when I get home, they're all right. My mother says to put a bar of soap under my bed at night, and I won't get them knots. Malin Blair. Fixing spouts. They're bent, mashed where the hammer face hits. I should have been watching you fellas. Use a hammer with a flat face and don't drive the spout too hard. Of course, aluminum spout isn't too hard to damage. Guess I prefer wood. They don't hurt the tree so much. You want to solder, you need a blowtorch. This here's got a shield on it, protect it from the wind. I bought it in 1946. Cost me six or seven dollars back then. Probably cost a hundred today. If you're going to solder, it's got to be clean. Put the flux on it and solder right off. We'll use tinner's rivets to patch these holes. You put them in a hole, you can solder down quicker. Can't get them at the store anymore. Can't get nothing anymore. This country's going to hell faster than I am. sap too early. Tree will dry out. I like to give the first run of sap to the tree. It's good for it. The old people used to say, if you had new syrup before Easter, you was doing good. It's a Monroe Arch, made over here in Quattacook. Harry Graham's grandfather made it. They use boilerplate. See those rivets? They hold it together. As long as a fellow don't leave it out in the rain, it'll last a long time. Crescent had worked in the sugar camp for as long as I can remember. He fed, harnessed the horses, and tended the fire. When George was boiling sap, I went to the cemetery when they were digging his grave. To hear them talk, George, Gordon French, Gordon Cairns, I swear you'd think Crescent was sitting right up there with them. For Crescent Bain, October 31st, 1917, April 19th, 1992. I've been praying all week for sunshine for the fair, for it to stop raining, but I had to get up off my knees because they were getting wet. Unknown fair patron.
People don't need many horses anymore. We had Blackie and Billy. Got both of them from Frank McConnell. Blackie was two and a half and Billy was five. We didn't use them except in the woods for hauling wood or during sugaring to pull the sap tub. Blackie was 25, 26 when he died and I think Billy was 32. Don't get to visit at the fair as much as I used to. Many uh, I knew have passed away. More French people come than before. I can't always remember their names and some of the ones I see, sometimes I can't remember your name. What are we talking about? Elton Lark. Sam was awfully proud of his peas. He grew those tall ones. He'd have them planted early April. Sometimes the ground was hardly thawed. Those low bush types, he used to say, you gotta get down on your belly for a week to get enough for dinner. Mary Harkinson. Four or five cows, a pair of horses, work in the woods sometimes in a bit of carpentry. No taxes back then, or you could work them off. No electricity, no hot water, no electric stove, no hydro bill. Raise five kids, could make a living on a small farm. Richard Rothney. George Milton Rowe, January 26, 1921 to November 27, 2000. Son of John Wesley Rowell and Inez Waldron of Clifton. Brother to Herb and Elva. Husband to Myrtle Lee of Hereford. Father to Nellie and grandfather to Jeffrey. Myrtle Lee, September 21st, 1925 to October 2nd, 2009. Thank you.